Hello folks, welcome back to Refit and Sail. My name's George Isted, the Silent Boat Butler. I run a small business that refits and repairs older boats, predominantly Contessa 32s, but I work on other boats as well. This is a mid-70s Contessa, and if you watched the last episode, you saw me starting the rebuild of the heads from scratch. So at the stage I left it, I had fitted stringers, I'd fitted a support for a new holding tank. The holding tank was loosely in place and uh, I flow coated everything and I was just about to start designing the cabinetry that was going to go into the heads to hide the holding tank, to support the new toilet and make it all look nice and shiny and uh, new looking. So we pick up the story at that stage, keep watching and you can see me rebuild the heads. <laughs> Well, it has been about a week since I've been in the heads here because I've been working on some jobs outside whilst there's been some nice weather, but I've got to the stage now where I can't remember what I recorded last, which is um, one thing. So as you can see, there is a holding tank in place uh, that's bolted in loosely. I can remove that when I need to, but what I need to do is come up with a plan for the cabinetry that's going to be going in here. And what I'm going to try and do is move everything slightly outboard of where it was previously on this boat to replicate the kind of arrangement that you had in a slightly later Contessa that has a GRP moulded liner in here. So I've just put some uh, white masking tape on the surfaces here so that I can draw on them and I'm going to be using my laser level here to work out roughly where things want to go and then using the tried and tested templating method that I've used before with bits of uh, thin plywood and a hot, glue, hot melt glue gun. I'm going to be sticking bits of thin plywood all over here to template and kind of mock up what I'm trying to make. Once I've done that I will send a picture off to the owner just to say this is kind of what I'm thinking uh, and hopefully it'll be a yeah that's fine or it'll be a mm, not sure could we do something so we shall see but hopefully I can come up with something that's reasonably easy to make, reasonably quick to make, uh, looks nice, gives a little bit more space uh, than what was in here before because um, as I said I'm trying to push it slightly outboard because the earlier arrangement that this boat and other kind of mid 70s and earlier boats had uh, had the loo kind of protruding out a bit more into the head's walkway if you like um, and uh, just by setting it slightly further outboard just gives a little bit more space to come through from the main cabin back there into the double berth which is kind of out of shot over there. So that is the plan. <laughs> gingerly because this isn't very strong and this thing probably weighs five kilos I guess six kilos um, I very gingerly put it on this framework that I've built just to kind of eyeball how the toilet's going to look whether it's going to fit is there space at the back for the hoses to come in for the inlet and out for the outlet and I think we're looking okay actually so we have a rough plan now if you know Contessa's you'll see my deliberate mistake. Well, it isn't a deliberate mistake as such. It's, um, <laughs> there's a sliding door that goes in here. And at the moment I've taken this bottom piece of wood all the way up to the bulkhead, but I had to do that because I needed to attach it to something. Ultimately, there's gonna have to be a cutout here so that sliding door can slide back in. And then I've got to work out how best to support this on certainly the um, aft end. So I suspect I'm gonna end up having to build some sort of little mini bulkhead or support underneath here um, to support the top and glass that in. Um, but it's starting to come together in terms of a plan. So that's good. I'm gonna go and take some photographs, send it to the owner and see what he thinks. And then we can take it from there. Well, as you can see, things have moved on a little bit. So I took those templates off to the workshop and I have cut out the two pieces that are the main parts. So the next piece of the puzzle 
is to work out exactly where the seacocks are going to go down there and I need to put some more support in so if I just push that with my foot slightly you can maybe see it flexes because it's only supported right at the very back on that side because there needs to be a gap for the sliding door to go in there so what I'm going to do is to put a piece of supporting material in just on that side there. So I'm effectively going to box this little piece in. That's going to get glassed into the hull. So that'll be the rest of the support on the aft end of that side. Now, obviously, you can see the internals of the hull there. That is going to get like a, a diagonal piece that's going to come in across there. I'm going to have to template that at some point. Well, folks, I have been pushing on with the work here, um, slightly off camera, apologies, but sometimes I've just got to get the work done, but I just thought I'd give you a quick update on where I've got to. So in here, you will see, let me just take that out for a minute, um, because it's in the way, in here you'll see there's an additional support that I've put in, so that's just screwed into the side here. Uh, it's attached into the top here, and that just stiffens up this side and gives it the support that it needs. Um, I've then worked out roughly where I want the seacocks to go. So you can see there's two nice neat holes in the hull there, which I checked and double checked and triple checked before drilling those holes. I haven't drilled the fixing holes yet, because I'll do that once I take this out. But the seacocks, these are Blake's, these are new Blake's, so they're DZR, they're not the old original bronze ones, but um, they're as good as you can get new so they are going to fit in there probably at a slight angle and then what i have done next is there's still a little bit of flex in this and i was deciding what to do just to try and remove that and i think the best solution before i put an additional support in underneath is to build the front because the the front section that's going to go in here is also going to stiffen it up and once that is in i'll see if it's suitably secure i suspect it will be but uh, I've just templated this front piece. There's going to be an access hole here, which will be open, so you can easily get in, switch the seacocks on and off when you're using the head. And um, this front piece will tidy up the front of the um, kind of the, the, the furniture and um, should look good. So this is all going to get covered in a type of um, plastic, a sheathing plastic which is going to look very very similar to a kind of a white gel coat finish and it's going to be a quick and easy and easy to keep clean solution I think um, and all the underside of this wood I'll seal with either polyester or epoxy or flow coat or something yet to be determined but at the moment I'm just trying to get everything to fit and look good and then once that is all done I can think about beautifying it and making it all waterproof and future proofing it. So that is where we've got. Next thing for me is to take this out, which is just put in place with uh, a glue gun. So um, I can take this template off to the workshop in a bit and cut out a suitable piece of plywood. So I don't think I've got any in the van, annoyingly. Um, so that's just going to pop out like this if I just tease it out it should all stay in one piece there we go and then out you come this bit of wood on the floor it's not very helpful there we go so i can take that off to the workshop after that after that i'm going to unscrew that and that's going to make drilling holes for fitting the seacocks much much easier so when you get these blakes, they come like this. And uh, this piece here is oversized. And you stick this in the hull, work out how much of that you need to retain, and then chop off what you don't need. So once this is kind of ready to fit, and I've got all the holes drilled, on the outside of the boat, I'm just gonna run around it with a pen, and then I can take it off and use a hacksaw or something like that just to chop down the unneeded material on the end of the seacock. So these will get bolted directly to the hull. If I was using a um, more modern kind of ball valve which has a very small surface area on the inside of the hull then I would probably put a very large backing plate so that there's a nice flat surface and a bit more strength for the seacock to attach to but because these have such a large flange you don't need to do that with the blakes i mean you can do if you want to be absolutely over the top belt and braces but it's not really necessary with the with the blakes and contessas generally don't have big backing pads under their 
seacocks or their Blake's seacocks from the factory. But as I said, if it was an alternative type of seacock, if it was a um, skin fitting with a ball valve on it, then that has a much smaller kind of surface area against the hull inside and out. So having that big backing pad is quite a good idea. And in fact, I did that on the engine seacock on this boat, I think. Um, if I look back at the old videos, um, or go and have a look at the seacock, because it's only next door, um, there'll be a big uh, backing plate on the hull. Anyway, let's talk in, more working. Well folks, I've taken that template off to the workshop. There's actually yesterday, it's another day today, it's beautifully sunny, uh, which is nice, but um, that template went off yesterday and I cut out a piece of plywood, which is now going to fit in where I want it to fit. So I'm gonna angle the camera down and you can see down here, I have also uh, drilled the fixing holes for the seacocks. These still need trimming, but um, I'm just leaving them in there just so I can see where handles and things need to go. Here's my piece of wood, and that is going to fit in there to kind of box all this in. It's a snug fit to get it all to go. But that is going to be my front support. Now I can sit on that and it doesn't flex at all, which is good. So the next job for me, or the next job I've been working on off camera is working out where the pump is going to go. So just angle this up ever so slightly. It's a Lavac toilet I'm fitting. It is using a through bulkhead pump. This is kind of like standard equipment for a Contessa. Again, not every Contessa has a Lavac, but um, I think they are one of the best pumps that you can buy for any boat and they fit nicely in these. And what I need to do is mount this pump somewhere around there, but on the other side of this bulkhead. And to work out the spacing of where I need to cut a hole. And you can see I've already drawn a little square on there. You might be able to just about see that. What I did yesterday was make up a little template. So I pre-cut a hole in the wood, worked out where the fixing holes would be for the pump. And so what I was able to do is offer that up on this side and work out where I want the hole. Because the key thing is I need to get it over this way aft as far as possible but I need to make sure it doesn't interfere with there's a, um, a piece of dog fur in there which is part of the supporting structure for this um, locker front so I need to make sure that doesn't interfere so I've drawn a line on there where that piece of wood is I can then come in with my template I can put that on there and uh, I'm going to cut that hole out next with my little oscillating tool and then I'm going to draw where I think the holes need to be, or I might in fact just offer the pump up on this side, work out where the holes need to be for the pump, in fact it goes that way round, and then we are very nearly there. going to fit somewhere in there but actually going to that's the top that's the bottom that's the side that's the side it actually wants to be and that pen is not long enough screwdriver is just to mark it. Oh, there we go, that'll work. Just about see it. And I like everything to be reasonably square with my little square. You see it, these two bottom holes roughly in alignment with each other. Close enough. So 
So, in theory, that lines up with that, that lines up with that, that lines up with that, and that lines up with that. All right, we're all good. So, I'll chuck those holes through. I should be able to mount it on the inside quite happily. It will look a little bit like a little bit like that. So I'm going to have to just trim that top bit just a tiny bit. Well, as you saw there, I just had to just trim this a little bit more just to make the hole slightly bigger because, of course, the uh, pump bit that sticks out um, needs to get its full range of movement a little bit more space around it than is on the, um, the pump body. But with another kind of 10 mil or so cut off, that now comes fully up now without interfering with the wood and it goes fully down as well. So we are all good on that. So having taken some measurements of the little gap you can see in here, I have gone full Blue Peter. If you're English you'll know exactly what that means. If you're foreign it's a kids TV show where they used to kind of make stuff out of sticky back plastic and cardboard and sellotape. Um, anyway, I have made a very rough template and so first fit. The idea is that this is going to fit in here somewhere. Actually that's not too bad for a first pass. Because the idea is if you use cardboard, you're not wasting really anything expensive. You can cut it out with a knife and just chuck it in. And if it doesn't quite fit, you've not lost a lot of time. So this is kind of like um, fit quickly, fail fast and remake it if necessary. But um, actually that is not far off, but I may not have left myself enough space for the toilet. I have the toilet. That needs to be mounted somewhere in there. Actually, it does fit. Although, it doesn't fit if I want it to be straight on, but... I think, to give myself a bit more space, and because it would be nice if that was straight-ish, or equal about, I quite like it to be there because then there's room for the pump and we're not going to be pushed for space. So I'm going to trim that cardboard down a little bit, maybe take an inch off so it just sits slightly further in there and uh, try again. This has been through a couple of little iterations just to trim it down to size on the edges and then on the end as well because the further it goes in the shorter it needs to be. But I've now got it trimmed as much as I think I'm going to do. It doesn't quite cover the hole that is um, there but I think that's going to be good enough and importantly I can now stick the loo itself roughly in the middle and we'll be able to bang a hole through the back piece to take the outlet hose and the critical thing for me because I know how annoying it is when it doesn't quite fit right is I can open that lid but the handle will be able to stay in the pump because it just about clears it which is one of the things I really wanted to do because um, some people just like leaving the handle in and uh, it means you can quickly lift the lid do what you need to do and close it up and it's all kind of ready to go it's um, a real faff win one part of the system interferes with another part. So I'm pretty happy with that. 
Well folks, I am back in the workshop. As you can see, I have the bits of the heads here. So you can see here, this is the back piece and it has the removable panels. And what I have done off camera is just make some framing up on the inside just so that it can support that removable piece. You can see around there, if I bring it closely, it's just simple bits of six mil ply that have been screwed in around there. And there are gaps for the little lugs that locate this front piece. If I can do this without dropping it all, that slides in there and we'll close up like that. And we'll look nice and neat. Now in the top here, you can see there's two little holes. That is gonna have two of those little push button catches. So they're completely flush when, um, when the thing is closed, but I want it to be nice and easy for anyone to get into the back end of this where all the pipe work is and the holding tank is. So you just go pop, open that up and away you go. So this piece is basically already uh, to have its coat of um, cladding plastic that's gonna go over the top of it. But one thing I want to do because there's always the potential of wet on a boat Whilst this is very good plywood, I want to coat the inside. So I am probably going to give this a coat of um, flow coat, so polyester flow coat all over the inside just to make it nice and neat. And if it needs to be cleaned, it'll be a nice hard surface that can just be washed over, wiped over and what have you. And uh, that is what's gonna happen next. So what I've also got here is the base part. So uh, this has the front on it, which is down there, the toilet will sit on there. This is gonna get covered in uh, the cladding plastic as well as will the front, but this piece here isn't. So I'm gonna flow coat this white. It's barely gonna get seen, but it just needs to look tidy. So this is the door recess. When the door slides in, it goes into this little recess here. So that is gonna get flow coated and the same under here. So it all looks nice and tidy. The only bit that I'm going to resist flow coating is a little piece here because when this is fitted, hard to describe, but when that's fitted, I'm gonna be glassing in just that little piece there into the um, hull of the boat just to make sure it's firmly attached because it's only getting a couple of screws in there. So a little bit of glass work as well to hold it in place is the way to go. So I'm going to mix up some gel coat, get that done, get that done, go and get some lunch and then come back and hopefully I can start thinking about covering this all in the plastic uh, cladding that I'm going to be using. boat again you might be wondering why was I using flow coat rather than paint well the answer is that I can put it on because it's a chemical cure I can just leave it to cure it'll only take a fairly short period only one coat's necessary and also I'm not looking for a perfect finish it's all out of view that flow coat so it doesn't need to be a beautiful paint finish it just needs to seal the wood and make it easy to clean but anyway I am back on the boat and I'm playing with this stuff here this is mylar film which I am using on these bulkheads here, if you can see that, um, I've already done that one, uh, to template for the teak veneer, which is going to go onto these surfaces. So all I do is cut up a sheet of this mylar film. I got a big roll of it and it's fantastic for templating. And uh, I've lined up the straight edge, which is the edge of the roll with the edge of the bulkhead here. and reasonably straight. Um, the mylar film is straighter than the boat, but it's good enough. Uh, and then I can simply go around with a marker pen. Uh, I've already got marks on the bulkhead where things are going to be screwed on, where the tabbing is down there. It's that slightly out of view. So I can just push the mylar film kind of up into the corners and just mark around the shape that I want. 
And what's nice about Mylar film is it doesn't deform, it springs back into shape, so you end up back with a flat surface. But I can poke it quite forcefully, actually, into the corners and just mark off. It'd be easier if that tape stayed on. Mark off where I will need to cut it to take the shape that I want. And you can see on there, I'm slowly picking up the shape off of the um, bulkhead. I'm over in the workshop now and you can see I've got the veneer rolled out on the desk here and having done a little bit more trimming of the template, I can get it to fit on top of there. It is going to need two pieces of veneer. You can see it overlaps slightly at the back here. I need another kind of couple of inches or so there, maybe 60 mil and uh, that's not a problem. The problem I do have is one, I'm not sure that I've got quite enough veneer because unfortunately this veneer when I pulled it out of the box has been damaged. That's the minor bit but um, it's kind of damaged on this corner here and then actually the worst bit is a big split here. So I've just dropped an email off to my supplier in the hope that they can supply a replacement piece which will be big enough to finish the job. Um, but if I can get one piece on today, then that will be a good start. So um, template is on, I'm gonna draw around that and then cut it out with some sharp scissors. And then I can cut the bit that's gonna butt up against it just there. Now, if I'm honest, this veneer is being a bit of a pain up the back bottom. Um, it's uh, very, very, very fragile and more fragile than previous veneer that I've used, but with extreme care, you can cut it without splitting. Uh, I suspect that's why I've got a few cracks and bits and pieces in the stuff that's delivered. If it was mishandled in any way at all, um, then I can see why it's split. Um, the other problem I've had is previously when I've bought veneer, the edges have been really nice and crisp, and um, the edges of this have been a little bit wavy and I'm not sure if that's damage or just the way it was made so what I've had to do and I've just done it with the extra piece that's going on here is trim it so I've put a um, a uh, straight level on uh, on the table here and um, I've just trimmed the extra piece that's going to go on the edge of this and I'm just using a really sharp snap off knife I know you can't see me but I wanted to show you this and uh, with it all kind of clamped down to the desk very carefully whilst holding the the straight edge in place running down this with a knife and I'm trying not to cut all the way through on the first go because I don't want to pull the wood um, because the knife will tend to sit in the grain slightly so I want to cut across any cross grain that I'm kind of finding and if I do it with care and don't rush it I do end up with a pretty nice straight edge which will hopefully butt up against the straight edge that I've cut on the extra piece that I've done there. If you're still watching this let me know in the comments if you've ever played with veneer and you have a better solution to this then do let me know. I'm just doing it the way that I kind of know has worked for me in the past. And I'm trying to make the most of this veneer rather than scrapping it and buying some more from somewhere else. There, that should do it. So I can just carefully no, nope, I still haven't quite cut through. I did put a new knife blade. I did put a new blade in this knife before doing this to make sure it was as sharp as it possibly can be. Right, unclip this and I should have a nice straight edge 
hopefully. Take that off carefully. Slide this over. There's the other straight edge. So I can now place that under there. And that's a pretty good fit. If I put those two together, it's quite hard to hold this, but you can see just about the join in there. And uh, if I push these together, the join virtually disappears. So I think we're okay. I can make that work. So I've just got a few little bits of tape around just to make sure it's all held fairly and pretty much where I want it. And I can do what I did with the rest of this and just kind of draw around the edge of the mylar sheet. I know this is a fairly straight edge, so I'll just put a few little markers and then I can come in and draw that on with a straight edge. Now this is the bit that isn't a straight edge, so. This is the bit I need to carefully cut. I can trim it a bit more on the boat if it doesn't look quite right, but I want to get it as close as I can here. Right, that I think will do the job. So fragile, even just, I'm worried about the masking tape pulling the wood apart. Or the veneer, I should say. There. You probably can't see that because of the amount of glare off this, unfortunately. But you just have to take my word for it. I've drawn around it and now I'm going to cut it out with some very sharp scissors. And there we have that first piece of veneer, all cut to size. I'm going to very, very carefully roll that up. I'm going to wrap it up in the templating material to try and protect it in the van. Very gingerly take it to the boat. Well, before I go back to the boat with that veneer, I want to do something with these, which is finally stick the white plastic on. I know that's blue, that's protective film. So I've been thinking over the last couple of days, the best adhesive to attach the plastic cladding to the wood. And I was going to do it with contact adhesive and I did a little test piece actually, which is helpfully not here, so I can't show it to you, um, using contact adhesive, which worked really well, but um, I'm always slightly concerned about using contact adhesive for something that I want to last a very, very long time. So I think the plan is going to be to go and use my old trusted faithful friend, the epoxy. Um, so I've got some epoxy that I've been using as a general purpose laminating and gluing resin. So I'm going to roll some of that onto the wood, same onto the plastic sheet, and then sandwich the two together. I might put some weights on on top of the wood just to hold it down because this is a pretty flat surface here. You might notice that it looks a bit sanded. That's because I've just sanded it to knock down any high spots of um, glue that I've dropped on it over the last little while. So um, this has been sanded, insert clip here. There we go. And um, it's had a wipe down with acetone to make it all nice and clean. The wood has been hoovered, so that's all nice and clean. So the only thing left for me to do is to mix up a batch of epoxy find a suitable roller to go on here and uh, I'm going to set up a time lapse. Now there's a chance that my phone might run out of storage space because I'm always up against it on my phone. You can help me with that. There is a link down in the description down below where you can donate to Refit and Sale and help me buy a better camera or a better phone perhaps with more memory um, and then I'll be able to um, record more stuff and potentially actually keep some of the stuff that I've recorded rather than constantly delete it once I've turned it into a YouTube film. So um, if you can't do that then at the very least hit that like button down there, um, down there somewhere. Um, it really helps. Go on, do it. Do it now. Do it. Thank you very much if you've just done it um, and hit the subscribe button as well because it helps me grow my channel and the more subscribers, the more YouTube revenue I get, the more I can put back into making these films, which hopefully you enjoy. Right, time to get gluing. <laughs>
there we go. We have the first three pieces of cladding glued down. I've just used a whole bunch of whatever weights I could find kicking around the workshop. I've always got stuff that I can use just to weigh things down. And I'm going to leave that now all to set. If I come back a little bit later today, that should have all cured and uh, I'll be able to trim around all the edges, but I may leave it to tomorrow just to give it plenty of time to fully cure up. I am back on the boat and here you can see I have sanded back all the little fills that I put into all these kind of little holes and dinks all over the bulkhead on that side and the same on that side everything's been wiped down with acetone this white surface has been abraded so it's got a bit of texture to it for the veneer to stick to obviously I can't do this side because I don't have that side cut out but my plan is to get the veneer on this side whilst I have all the acetone out I've spent a bit of time cleaning the headlining because it was horribly stained there was lots of splashes of uh, I wouldn't like to guess what and I've been cleaning up this kind of bit here which will be visible once the cabinetry is all in the only bit I can't get out at the moment is this stain here but I've got some stain remover which I will put on there in due course but it's not with me at the moment that will hopefully get rid of that kind of rusty looking stain but um, I'll worry about that later so we're pretty close to gluing the veneer on to there but first I'm going to have a little trial fit so I've got it in the main cabin there all rolled up and uh, I'm going to bring it through and see how close a fit it is on there. I'm having to be unbelievably delicate with this veneer so that I don't damage it but hopefully Gonna fit up there, okay. That looks okay. I think we're all right on that. So the plan for gluing this is less than ideal. So what I'd like to do is cover it all in glue and uh, probably epoxy or uh, something like that and then um, vac it on there so um, cover it all in um, uh, plastic and um, create a vacuum uh, on it to squeeze it in and hold it there whilst the glue cures but because of the shape and the contours and everything that's around here it's going to be virtually impossible to pull a vacuum I think so plan B is to roll on a coat of epoxy all over the area that's going to be glued and then put it up in place and hopefully the surface tension of the epoxy will hold it there and I'm going to add to that some masking tape to hold it and stop it from slowly creeping and I'm going to hang around on the boat until it started curing so that's the plan fingers crossed it works because um, I haven't done a vertical surface like this um, without vacuuming it on before. So this is going to be a bit tricky, but hopefully manageable with the use of masking tape and not too much swearing. Let's see. <laughs> of a lot of tape I've managed to get this on here I'm pretty flat I can't really feel any air bubbles or anything like that underneath it which is good there's just this edge here that keeps wanting to curl up slightly um, but as this epoxy is going stickier and stickier as it's starting to cure I'm just going to keep kind of pressing it down and eventually it will stop popping up hopefully that's the plan so um, that looks okay it'll be interesting to see what it's like once it is all unmasked but I think 
by the time that's varnished, it's going to look pretty good. And the sun is now shining straight in on the camera, so you can barely see me. Back in the workshop, it's now the next day. I've just taken all the weights off all these pieces. They are all well glued on, so I just need to be a bit protective of this surface here. It's got a protective film on it, but I don't really want to be kind of scuffing it up because that film is only probably a few microns thick uh, and I don't want to scratch the surface underneath. Uh, what I'm going to do next is cut around all these pieces just to remove excess material. We use my oscillating tool, this little thing here made by Bosch. There are others available, but this Bosch tool has been absolutely fantastic. I've used it daily for as long as I've been running this business and I actually bought it a number of years before I bought the, before I started the business and um, it has never let me down. I'm sure Fine and Ryobi and uh, DeWalt also make very good tools, but I've got to be honest, this thing has literally never let me down. It's been fantastic. So um, it'll probably break now, I've said that. Uh, once I've done that, I'll go around it with my little palm sized router. It's got a flush cutting bit on it. I don't know if you can see that. So that means I can whiz around fairly quickly all the way around the edges and I'll get a nice flush um, cut on the plastic. And then it's basically done, which is good. So I'm going to get to it. <laughs> the edges trimmed I decided to put the front piece on this section which is the base of the heads unit and I have just glued on the front white plastic and that piece there which is a funny four-sided shape is the piece that is kind of the infill that's also got its white plastic cladding on it as well so once that's all cured up I can trim around those and uh, stick it all back into the boat and see how it looks. I've just done the veneering on the forward bulkhead in the head, so that just needs to set up and then that can be varnished and uh, it'll end up looking a bit more like this. Sorry, not a very good picture. I need to um, stand back a bit really, but I can't because I have the holding tank between my knees. I've just removed it because here is a tank gauge. This is an Enemy A2000 tank gauge because uh, we're getting all the new instrumentation on the boat. It's from Weimar and I'll be fitting that in the top of the tank. That's the last thing that kind of needs to be fitted before the tank can go back on there and not come off again. Well, as you can see, there is the base in position and it is in and not coming out again because I've just screwed all the screws in, the fixings that are holding it in place. Uh, that's on both sides going into the bulkhead, but also on the aft end, there's a small area which I'm about to glass in. You can see there's an area there which doesn't have any flow coat on it. I've done that on purpose so that I can just lay up a little bit of glass in there just to tie it into the hull and just make sure it's super secure. Once that is in, I'm gonna flow coat the area just to make it all look clean and white. And then the seacocks can go in as well. Also off camera, you can see there is the holding tank back in place. That is also in and not coming out again. You may recall earlier in the video, I embedded some fixings in the, the backing piece that's in here. So I've now put those uh, back in with some thread locker on them so they are done up tight and shouldn't rattle loose. All the inlets and outlets on the top of the tank are there along with the tank sender. So that's all ready to go. The only thing I've got to do is I must order the breather fitting, which is gonna go out through the hull somewhere there. This is the breather tube here. So it's essential to have a breather which also to some extent acts as an overflow if the tank is overfilled. But hopefully, because we've got a tank sensor, that won't happen. 
Well folks, it's been another day in the heads area, but as you can see, more has been done. I'm apologizing again for not filming the work as it's been done, but sometimes I just need to kind of crack on and do it. So I apologize for not necessarily showing how I've done it, but I'll try and explain. But as you can see, the back piece is in, the pump there is in. And if I do this with my two little catches, I can lift that out and you can see in there, the holding tank and some pipe work. Now, I'm not going to say fitting all the pipe work in here has been easy. It's actually been quite a sod. I've got um, a nice selection of scratches and what have you, but the holding tank is plumbed into the pump. The holding tank is also plumbed into the seacock. The holding tank is plumbed into the deck suck out fitting, which is just up there, just out of shot. Um, what I haven't done yet is fitted the breather because the deck fitting um, or the hull fitting for the breather is not turning up till tomorrow so I'll do that but that's just a, a short length of hose that comes out the top of the tank and into a, a fitting that's going outside of the hull. Um, what I have also done I started off the day by fitting finally the seacocks that are also out of shot but I can show them with the magic of editing now. Um, so they're all done, they're just bolted through from the outside. The um, countersunk head uh, machine screws are countersunk into the hull and they will get a skim of filler over the top and then a coat of the Hydrotect epoxy um, barrier coat that I used on the rest of the hull just to make sure they're completely sealed from water ingress. Um, they're A4 fittings, so even if a bit of water gets in, they should be okay, but crevice corrosion is an issue with stainless steel under the water, so um, that's why they ideally need to be completely sealed from the water and they will then effectively last forever, pretty much. Um, I've given the wood here a, another coat of varnish um, and uh, that's about it really. It's been a fairly busy day of just doing bits and bobs, um, getting scratched, working in really tight corners uh, and fitting all this stuff. Now I did post a picture of this on my Instagram earlier. If you follow my Instagram, um, you may have seen it. And one of my friends commented on the fact that there's very limited space between the tank top and the deck. And he's absolutely right. There is very little space, but you can just about reach in here and remove the inspection hatch, which is this little cap here. And you can get your kind of hand in just about to the top of the tank. And if something got stuck in there, hopefully you'd be able to use, you know, something in there just to unblock it. Uh, and flush everything through. That is the only problem with holding tanks and a lot of skippers I know uh, and I myself always say the only things that go into the holding tank are things that have passed through your body. So even things like toilet tissue tend to go in a little baggie and get disposed rather than going through the holding tank just in case they block the pipe work up. So, um, but if the worst should happen, it is possible just to get in there. Um, the other thing it is, of course, possible to do is take these hoses off and remove the whole tank. It is sized so that it will just about fit out of this hole. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but it is possible and doable. The whole thing has been designed to be a serviceable holding tank. I've just moved the camera down a little bit just to show you um, the final piece that needs to go in here. Now, I would pretty much have this all done, apart from the fact that the piece that goes in here, I needed to trim it to size a little bit today. And because I want everything to be completely waterproof, I have given this a coat of epoxy, which is only just about kind of cured. It's not achieved a complete cure yet. Uh, and um, that needs to go in here. You can see I've already pre-drilled the holes for the sink uh, sorry, the toilet outlet, which is going to go through there and the toilet inlet hose, which is going to come up there and go into the bowl. Um, holes are drilled also for the toilet just to go in. So tomorrow I will, once this epoxy has completely cured, fit this, fit the toilet, fit the final bits of pipe work, and I'll be able to take this blue protective plastic off and um, she's pretty much done. I do need to put a piece of wooden trim just along here because this is really quite a sharp corner uh, and I know from going to the toilet on Contessas as a man you can kind of do it setting up or kneeling and I do like to kneel on here and that's going to be really uncomfortable so I'm going to get a piece of um, wooden trim just to round over that corner a little bit and make it a bit nicer. There's also potentially going to need to be a little bit of trim in here because the um, kind of piece that comes in on the diagonal um, on this side and on 
the side over there, which is out of shot, um, there is a little bit of the tabbing on show. Just because of the way I had to make uh, things fit, I couldn't completely cover up the tabbing, um, because if I did that, there wouldn't be space for the toilet bowl. So um, everything's a little bit of a compromise when you put these boats together. So I'm gonna have to put a tree of trim in there. I'm either gonna use some more of this white plastic, or I've got some sapele, which I might use as trim in other areas around the heads just to um, beautify and prettify and just um, kind of finish it off. But I will make that decision tomorrow once it's all kind of in place and finished. Well, folks, you have the pleasure of seeing the virtually completed heads unit here. And uh, I've just finished doing the plumbing in there, which involved putting a um, breather for the tank in and everything is done up. So this toilet should work, but you get to see the very exciting bit. And I've been really tempted to do this all day long because this blue plastic, which covers it, has been protecting the surface. And I've been wanting to pull this stuff off for days and days and days because it reveals the beautiful, clean, white plastic coating that I put on it. And um, that looks pretty good. There's still a bit of tape on there. And in fact, if I get the cover, this pops in like this hide all the nasties and I can do the same here. Look at that! So beautiful! What do you think guys? Does it look good? I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to pull the rest of this plastic off and take some photographs and send it to the owner because I know that he's very excited to see what it looks like. The only thing I'm going to do just to finish this off is um, I'm going to possibly put a piece of wood trim in just at the very top here, just to cover that gap. Or I might just come in and do a bead of white seal. I haven't 100% decided yet, but um, a bit of wood trim might look quite nice there. I've also, if you go and look down here, I've also got to piece, uh, put a piece of wooden trim in across there to um, just finish this bit off as well. But I'm going to take great pleasure in pulling the the blue off of the front here as well. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. It's a bit like an unboxing video this, maybe. Not sure. Apparently that's a thing on the internet. Unboxing. There we go. You can see why I need to put a piece of wood trim on there because you can just see the join between the two bits of um, plastic cladding that I've put on. But only, I think that looks pretty awesome. Here's another look at that heads without me in the way. And there we go, looking pretty nice. There's still a tiny bit of finishing off to do, but it is essentially all done, which is lovely. And uh, the white contrasting with the newly veneered bulkheads, which still need varnishing to finish them off completely. And there's some bits of trim that need to go on, but I am pretty pleased with how that's turned out. It's kind of a nice, Approximation of what the slightly later contestors have, but they had a GRP moulding. I've achieved kind of the same look with uh, the white plastic cladding on the plywood. There's the nice new sheet, Seacox. There's just a little bit of wood trim to go and maybe a little bit of uh, ceiling just around some of the edges. But she's basically all done. I think with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed me rebuilding this heads over the last two videos. If you want to support the show, there is a link down in the bottom in the description where you can buy me a beer or buy me a coffee. If you're a teetotaler, that's all good. I do enjoy beer. Uh, or if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. It helps grow the channel. Hitting the thumbs up as well does exactly the same thing. You'll get to see more of my content come up in your YouTube feed. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.